Hello, welcome to Big Bang Radio Spotlights. This is a show where we talk to various artists from all around the world about their music and the various processes that they use for making it. I'm your host, Michael Parker, and today I had a chance to speak with Curtis and Nathan from the group Post Hawk. Without further ado, here's the interview. Okay, so how did Post Hawk get its start in music? How did you all start as a group? I'll just take that away, Nate. Okay, so in, um, in 2017, we, um, I was still in the Marine Corps and I was writing songs alone in uh, the barracks. And when I met Curtis, the friends of a friend who was um, still living in Arizona, we kind of met through um, shared interest and uh, he used to be in the Air Force as well. Oh, cool. um, so we kind of um, uh, resonated with that and we started sending songs back and forth where I'd record some stuff and send it his way. And he would put drums on top of it and send it back. And then we kind of just had fun doing that for uh, about six months and then when i got out of the military i moved back to phoenix and uh we just started getting the dream team together and uh approached it in a matter that like we were never trying to do anything particular what we we're writing and kind of just let it develop on its own and i think that let the opportunities like develop on their their own where we weren't trying to funnel anything through any certain processes which gave it an opportunity to flourish um, on its own, I guess. So it's safe to say that this group started with the two of you. That's pretty much what you're saying. Like YouTube, in a way, in a way, it kind of started. In, in a way, yeah. I mean, Gonzalo, the lead guitar guitar player, has been as much of a core member as oh. us, I'd say, because um, he was there in the beginning. Oh. We met him on Craigslist, um, and he was one of those lucky Craigslist finds where we didn't oh, get yeah. murdered, and you know, <laughs> he, he, he was really talented and worked as hard as we did. And um, so, he, I would say he's definitely a core member as well. Well, that's cool. How did you all? How did you all get the name Post Hawk? By the way, how did the group name come about? Well, the interesting thing about the name is that it means after the event. So. It's going to mean something different to each of us. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those things that, like, when we heard that phrase, like, you know, we we're just talking band names, and it's just like, well, that kind of makes sense because, like, um, when you're forming a band, oftentimes you'll um, run into situations where you have to take different paths with, with certain friends um, in, in different <laughs> parts in life where you have forks in the road. And that's like an event to some people. And later on, you look back and be like, everything that's happening now is because of what happened after that event. What about you, Curtis? What, what are your opinions on that? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't in a band for over 10 years, I believe. And I had it in my mind that I, the next project I was going to join was going to be something that I connected with, that I knew I loved the music. And when Nate and I started writing music and he sent me this whole barrage of songs, I think it was like 20 plus songs on Google Drive. I'm like, do something, something with going this. On here. <laughs> and for me, it was very much, you know, I'm in my 30s now. Um, it, it was a mental shift of, you know, I, I want to get back in this band thing and I want to make this uh, something legit and go all out, all out on it, basically. I think and Curtis that, and I were in the same uh, frame of mind in that we were both just like, you know what, let's just do this. Let's stop talking about it in your life because like there's so many things that you, you see and you think, oh, you know, I don't have enough talent to do that. I could never do that well. But then you realize like it just comes down to doing it yep. and everything else falls into place if you just keep doing it. You're right. Put, put in the work. Sure. You're right. It's about yeah. knowing, your, knowing your self-work, willing to put in the time and effort because... If you want to reach your goal, you gentlemen have already figured that out. You know that by your service in the military, that hard work pays off. It, yeah. it, it, it pardon my language, it can be a, but it's <laughs> it, but it's worth it. Can you please uh, tell me about what it was like um, for your first performance as a band, and what did you guys take from that experience? How did it oh, help yeah. you all? Like like, what was that like? We. Our first show was at a, uh, a bar in Tempe over here uh, called the Yucca Tap Room. Oh, and the, the Yucca Tap Room is, is actually like a, a cornerstone of the local music scene here mm -hmm. in like the Phoenix Tempe area. It's like it's one of those places that they'll, they'll play anybody 
but it's also a bar and it's like really loud. It's not meant for live sound, but they do it anyway. It's like a big punk rock venue. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And it has kind of like, you know, a built in little um, group of people there. And it was it was bad. I mean, we <laughs> we um, I mean, that's the thing you learn too. Is it's like it's always stepping stones. And like, well, I think for me personally, what I learned that was my first live performance. Mm-hmm. This is my first band. Um, so that that was my first show, first time playing in front of people, and I don't remember much of it because I think I just like blacked out and then just <laughs> did it. Um, but then at the end, you know, you. Uh, you learn a lot about how you need to simplify things in a live performance mm-hmm. to be able to um, bring out the really human things that people like to see in live performances. People like to see those things that aren't exactly perfect, but are uniquely human and passionate. Um, whereas I went into it originally thinking that I needed to make it this con, this complicated arrangement, constantly moving pedals and switching dials and this and that. And then, over time, after playing more and more shows, I started realizing, you know, just dumb it down a bit and allow yourself to make those mistakes and with it having a simpler format. Cool. Yeah. What, and I think it, it kind of created the chemistry component because I think to a good live performance, the band members have to just click. There has to be that natural chemistry there because uh, in a setting like that where i mean being on the drums i couldn't hear a single thing uh, it was a quick learning moment of like all right we need to be able to adjust to anything basically um and then our second show was like 20 times better and cool. I, that was really the only rough show we've ever had so you gentlemen have a distinctive uh, sound of synthesis ambience emotion and power what influenced you all to come up with this unique sound um, you know, that, that's a really good question. And it's also one that like, um, it, it really came to chance in that when we brought everyone together, everyone had very distinctive, um, influences and because we weren't trying to create anything in particular, we weren't starting this thing and saying, okay, we're creating an alt rock progressive rock band. That's going to be sounding like this. It was more like, okay, well, you know, we're all here. We all like to jam together and let's just jam. And because of our influences were so different, they were allowed to come out because we weren't trying to funnel it. Um, Gonzalo, the lead guitar player, he came up in the school of thought of the hard rock in the 80s and 90s, influenced by, you know, the big, big rock bands like Metallica, um, Guns N' Roses, those sort of things, a lot of pyrotechnics. I, I came up with more on the indie side of things, like Death Cab for Cutie, The Decemberists. So we have like all these different perspectives on it. And so when we allowed everyone to kind of just be themselves, it just developed into its own thing, um, which I'm very proud of because I I mean, how many times do you, you hear bands um, that just like, it's like, okay, you know, good on you like and i i just i i i would like i like original um stuff that's like actually genuinely original that you're not trying to be anything in particular so i think with us allowing or like going from that perspective it allowed us to to become who we are you know uniquely okay curtis do you have um anything that you would like to add to that Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing with us is, you know, like Nate said, I think if you look at us on paper with how different our influences are, um, it really shouldn't work. And, you know, in the first couple months, I think we were all kind of holding on to our influences. And it took us a couple months of writing and playing shows to realize we just need to let this happen. So we started to take more of an open mind approach. And, you know, it, it could be anyone that comes in with a, a good riff, a good, you know, drum lick, something on those lines, and we just build from there. Now, speaking of music, drum roll, please. <laughs> Your latest album, Wilderness, The Villain, which was just released in June of this year. I want to talk about that. What inspired you all and motivated you all to create this album? So we, um, 
our first set of recordings, um, we put a demo uh, together called Daffodils. It was like six track. And um, it was when we went and recorded that in 2018, I think. Mm, yeah. Or At the beginning of 2018, yeah. um, um, we we kind of rushed it. Um, I feel like we um, we recorded the whole thing in like a week. And mm-hmm. we learned a lot of lessons from that process. Um, it was just a six track EP and it was kind of scattered as far as like where its identity lied. After that, we recorded a single. And um, after we did that, we realized, you know, what we really want. And after talking with everyone, like we all are people that enjoy an, a record, like a, an album. Mm-hmm. And so we went into wilderness with the concept of we just want to make a complete record that the entirety of the record was more important than any of the songs on the record. Um, Cause I, I personally really like going front to back on an album, like on a long bike ride or something and, and just realizing that it's a complete piece of work. So we went into it thinking, let's just make this for its own sake. Even though a single is probably going to make you more money, um, you're going to see a lot more return on a, 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 like a popular single. Um, it, it, this is what we, like I said before, like we're doing this for ourselves. So it's like, if we want we're listening to our as fans, like we would want to hear a complete piece of work. So that's how we approached it. At least what, what yeah, were your yeah. thoughts, Curtis? Yeah. And I think that's something that we kind of battled with in the beginning is, you know, kind of finding, I think it's difficult to find an identity in the beginning, especially when you have such diverse backgrounds and influences it's kind of like, what are we? Yeah. And it took us accepting the fact that we are who we are and we're not going to overthink um, the writing process. And I think because we're not really pushing for one particular thing, you know, we're not looking for radio hit singles or anything on those lines. Um, we realized that, hey, I think we need to do a full album. I think this is something that um, really captures our dynamics and, you know, um, <clears throat> kind of <clears throat> what we push for in, in terms of depth. Um, a full album just felt right at that time. Yeah. I mean, down the line, maybe we'll do singles again, maybe do EPs, but we truly felt that we needed to do a full body of work to show kind of this is us, this is post hoc. How can your fans keep up with you or, or learn about what's going on with post hoc? Um, how can they reach you guys so that they can keep up with the latest updates? Um, Facebook, uh, just post talk. Um, you be the first one to pop up. Instagram, we, we post pretty frequently. We're also on YouTube. Um, on Instagram, we are post talk official. Um, and on YouTube, um, you're going to run into a bunch of law videos about post talk ergo prompto. Um, but just look for the music ones. And um, yeah, the, I'd say those are the best three platforms. Uh, Curtis, what do you think? Yeah, I'd say Facebook, Instagram, YouTube are primary three. I'd say. Yeah, we're we're not very up on the tweeters um, because <laughs> we're uh, we're we're uh, I don't know. We're not old yet, are we? Uh, I think we're probably breaching that. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like the thirty-year-old running back in the NFL. <laughs> nah, don't say that, guys. I, I just I just turned thirty last week, so nah, you yeah. you, you can't you can't say that. Nah, if you have one <laughs> social media account, you are up to speed. <laughs> if you have one, you guys have three, Good so trust me, you're in the running. You're not Mike behind. Said we're in it, so it's you're, it's you're, right. you're not behind. I would like to thank Nathan and Curtis from Post Hot for sitting down today with us and talking to us about their music. If you would like to see more interviews like this, you can check us out at facebook.com slash studio67ncc or youtube.com slash nashcomcollege. Or you could also check us out at Instagram at studio67ncc. I'm Michael Parker. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.